This video is sponsored by Skillshare. <coughs> Gemstones. They are a thing that exists, which means that I have to turn them into characters. Recently, I have been scouring in the comments and asking on the community tabs to find the next victim of me personifying abstract concepts. And this week, gemstones just really spoke to me. But ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, we can't turn gemstones into just anything. I've done the magical girls, I I've done the fairies, the goddesses, but I think that it is high time that we revisited my other hyperfixation, which is ladies with swords. So the gemstones that I picked for this video are Red Barrel, Peter's Light, and Iris Agate. I didn't pick these for any particular reason other than that I thought they were pretty. And I also just kind of picked colors that looked good together. But I did put a little bit more thought into the mood boards, which are here. Oh, hello. So for Red Barrel, I've actually had this character in my mind for a while. I just wanted to make sort of like a cool, tough night girl character that has like a color palette that has a lot of like really deep fuchsia and and reds and like blacks, just something like really bold and intense. Peter's Light, whenever I looked at the gemstone, I just got like a really vivid image of a character in my mind. So I just kind of tried to pin things that reminded me of that. And for some reason, Sabine Wren from Clone Wars comes to mind. I don't know exactly why, but that is where my brain went. And those of you who have been keeping up with the sketchbook sessions will know that I've seen your comments about wanting me to make a porcelain corset and Yes, they have become a new obsession of mine. But the gemstone just really reminded me of that aesthetic, so they are also inspiration for this character's design. And finally, for Iris Agate, head empty. No thoughts. Unlike the other two, I have absolutely no ambitions going in with this character, so I just sort of like pinned images that reminded me of the colors on this board. Like again, a lot of avant-garde runway looks with that like really reflective plasticky material. You know, this one. And then just a lot of pastel character designs. I don't know, we're gonna be just adventurous with that one and dive right in. So to start, I began by just quickly roughing out the silhouettes I had in mind for each of the characters in one file so I can try to coordinate them as a group before working on them individually. I also wanted to distinguish their shape language to set them apart a bit. They ended up staying pretty close to these original concepts, but they did diverge a little bit. But the one that I finished first was Peter's Sight, so I'm going to begin with that one. Since I had a really vivid image of what I wanted this character to look like, they were definitely kind of a mishmash in terms of design language because I was trying to use the general shape language of the stone and combine it with the idea I had in my head. And overall, I'd say they turned out the closest to my original vision, but almost cooler. I thought the pattern of Peter's Sight would make a super cool design element. It kind of reminded me of frothy ocean waves mixed with Kintsugi. So for their armor, I used a lot of sharp shapes with rounded edges and went with a pretty classic layout in terms of breastplate, pauldrons, and greaves, but with some larger, more fantasy-inspired accents, along with the Baroque trims inspired by the look of porcelain corsets. I definitely took a lot of inspiration from the design of porcelain corsets, and especially this one, since the marbling looked so much like the Peter Sight gem. So I really just ran with it, and this character came together pretty quickly, and it was really fun all the way through the design process. So for this one, in terms of like build and appearance, I also ended up leaning a bit into androgyny, because that's something I haven't played around with as much in these designs videos. I'll throw a couple of the face references I used up on screen. I went for a very active looking athletic build because I imagined their character would be the nimble, quick character of the group. They have a smaller sword and shield, so I figure their fight style would be more focused on speed and agility. Because whenever I have these like knight character units of three, I usually make one the tank, one the agile fighter, and one more of the analytical strategist. So that's where this character would fit. I also gave them a big cloak to force that active triangular silhouette and also because I think the movement of the cloak would look really cool if this character was in motion and that idea is also what kind of inspired the hairstyle. I figured they can't have a ton of hair in their face if they're moving quickly so I imagine if they did have bangs they would always just be swept up into the wind into this hairstyle anyways so this hair just reads as like very fast to me for some reason like the hair version of racing stripes and yeah that's stupid but it's also funny so. <laughs> And that's the other reason why their build is like all leg. I wanted that heavy emphasis on running and movement, kind of how Tracer's proportions are very leg heavy in Overwatch. It's a very 
Overwatch-inspired set of characters, I suppose. But yeah, in terms of colors, similar to Red Barrel, I also just filled in the silhouette before finishing the sketch and went from there because it just made it easier for me to see what was working and what wasn't. I did struggle a little bit with the shapes of the armor on this one, but this did help me to actually start making some decisions. And from there, I also just colored in a very intuitive way, mostly color picking from my reference and then tweaking the colors a bit, often making them a little bit more saturated, and then mostly keeping it monochromatic except for the heavy gold accents. And then I tried to use the pattern of the stone in the armor itself, kind of like marbling, almost like the armor is made out of heavily refined petersite stone. And this was really fun to paint and play around with. This character is probably my favorite out of the three. I really love the end result. And I don't know, it was just like therapeutic to paint and work on. Man, I've, I've got to get back to doing the full illustrations because they're just too much fun. Next, I'm going to be designing Red Barrel. But first, do you struggle with poses? Do you find yourself wanting to illustrate epic action sequences, but when you do, your poses look stiffer than my back after three hours of drawing like this? Yeah, me too. Which is why I continually turn to this video sponsor, Skillshare, when my action poses are starting to look like some real hot garbage. I've been doing a lot of side client projects lately and in preparation, one of the things that I've been working on a lot in my sketchbook is action poses and gesture drawings because they are very relevant to the projects that I'm working on. Which is why I've been checking out Sue Ann Chan's class, Characters in Motion 101, Illustrating Fluid Gestures. Poses that convey a lot of motion are obviously the hardest to master and I'm someone who struggled with really stiff looking art for a long time. And even though I have improved quite a bit, I feel like art fundamentals are like a muscle that I have to exercise on a regular basis to maintain, which is why coming back to basics with Sue's class has been really helpful. I really love how she breaks down gesture drawing, beginning with the line of action and then posing the shoulders and the hips, and then even explaining how the distribution of a character's weight and their points of stress can impact the flow of a pose. She's able to articulate so many parts of the process that I don't consciously think about, which has helped me to become so much more aware of them. And her class has forced me to do those dreaded 30 second gestures that I am super afraid of. And honestly, they're not that bad. Okay. These are some speeder van gestures that I did just sort of last week. They're very unfocused and sort of unreferenced too. And here are some gestures that I did last night while watching Sue's class. Sorry, some of these have boobies. I hope that's okay. Sorry, Skillshare. You taught me how to do this, so. They're obviously very much a work in progress, but I'm pretty proud of these because I did these in 30 seconds and these in under a minute. So I'd say we're already making progress. I feel like I'm already getting a lot out of this class. If you struggle with the same pose syndrome, I can't recommend it enough, and I think it's great for both beginners and experienced artists. But if gesture drawing isn't really your thing, Skillshare also has classes on countless other topics like traditional painting, sewing, crocheting, and knitting, and even cooking. So if you want to check out Sue's class or one of the many others in Skillshare's catalog, you can do so for free because the first 1,000 people to join using my link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for once again sponsoring your friendly neighborhood pile of leaves. Now, let's get designing. All right, like I said in the mood board section, I've had this character in my mind for a while. Sometimes I just get random glimpses of cool character concepts, and this one is based around the heavy use of that fuchsia slash deep crimson color that fits perfectly for a red barrel, so that's why I ended up going with this idea here. I basically just wanted her to look super badass and cool, heavily inspired by Garnet from Steven Universe, but with more of a fantasy video game aesthetic. So the premise for each design basically was to base the colors and the shapes on the gemstone itself, and then use that to come up with a style of armor and a weapon that fit well, and finally use some lore and symbolism about each gemstone to come up with a general personality and attitude, and go on from there. I I am very loosely pulling from gem symbolism because it's too big of a subject to research for the amount of time I had, but in my brief Google searches about each stone, a lot of articles said similar things, so I didn't feel like I had a ton of unique ideas to go on, but from my limited research, Red Barrel especially seemed to be associated with courage, confidence, and new beginnings. It seemed like a very bold stone, which fits really well for the direction I wanted to go in, especially in terms of shape language. So I went 
went for a lot of large, bold square shapes with some pointed edges, similar to a lot of the cuts of the stone that I have on my board. Many of them have that pointed rectangular look. So I wanted to echo that in the shapes of the armor, but it proved to be actually quite tricky. I went through a lot of different ideas for the breastplate in pauldrons, especially. I really wanted to use that sharper part of the cut on the pauldrons, but a lot of the ways I tried to sketch it out just ended up being kind of goofy looking or broke the silhouette too much. And I was kind of at a loss for references of armor that had more square shapes because historical armor was usually much more curved and the square armor I found looked a little bit too modern, a little bit too Call of Duty sci-fi. Like I didn't really want her to look like she was wearing a ballistic vest or anything. So I decided to go out on a limb and design something a little bit more rooted in fantasy, which it, it's me. I, it's surprise, surprise. Of course I did. I've mentioned in the past that I really like the design language used in Overwatch characters. The aesthetic feels very sci-fi, but I love the use of bold shapes to give each character a really interesting silhouette. So with Barrel, I decided to just try to get a rough sketch down and then I filled in the rough colors of the silhouette and then I started working from there. Kind of using color to draw the eye and define the shapes since the image I had in my head is so heavily based on the colors. I've talked about it before, but I've gotten in the habit of thinking more in terms of color like a painter instead of using line art. So in the future, I'll probably begin with those rough color mock-ups that I did for the elemental girls because they were really helpful for experimenting with ideas and just nailing down the look of the ensemble in general and especially the silhouettes. I guess this is basically just thumbnailing, you know, like a professional person instead of just going in blind. Who knew that would be helpful, huh? But from there, I think she started to come together a lot faster. I figured she would be more of a tanky head-on fighter since she's courageous and bold. So I wanted to give her a really large weapon as well. And for some reason, the weapon that came to mind was Thanos's double-sided blade. So I decided to give her a similar sword. And of course, since she's a tank, she would also also need a matching shield as well. I wish her pose allowed us to see more of the shield. Uh, it kind of ended up looking a little boring in terms of shape because I just didn't really think that out very well. I especially like how uh, whenever I did the tree knights, you could see the shields and they all looked really cool. So like, that's kind of my bad because at least two of these characters have shields that you can barely see. So uh, whoops, but I was actually struggling to pose these characters a lot that day. So that's probably why it's one of the reasons why I started doing some gesture drawing but in terms of the full color job, like I said, I gave her a big garnet inspired afro and did a fade between like a deep crimson and more of a fuchsia. And as a side note, her face was heavily inspired by Callie Ledger, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who is one of my favorite Instagram makeup gurus. Her looks are so cool, so I wanted to pay homage to her here. But yeah, I basically carried those colors into the rest of the armor as the main palette. I really wanted to keep it pretty monochromatic, so I just did various tones and shades of that red color and just kept tweaking the placement. I did this design in a very intuitive trial and error kind of way, so it kept changing as I went. And eventually towards the end, I just feel like she was looking a little bit too monochromatic and I wanted to add an accent color to really help unify her with the other characters. So I ended up adding gold accents to reference the unrefined rock in the reference images that's sort of around the stone. And I think this helped to make the design look a bit more classically fantasy, but I think I could have figured out some better shapes for those accents. I think it's a little jarring next to the predominantly square shapes, but in terms of like trim and stuff like that, my visual library is just not that expansive and I didn't find any references that I really like. But that's the point of these sessions, right? It's trial and error, it's experimentation to just try to come up with different cool ideas. But with that, she's basically done and I actually think she ended up looking super cute. Howdy, I've been putting this off because honestly, I just didn't feel like going through comments, but here are the names that I chose for the previous fairy design videos. Okay, I'm gonna do this kind of rapid fire since we have six characters to get through, but for my Barbie Pagoda Fungus Fairy, I chose L, which was suggested by Allison B. For the Jack-O-Lantern Mushroom Boy, I chose Frederick, which was suggested by Sokka Vibes, because yeah, he kind of does look like Chopin. And Cherry for the Orange Fan Fungi, which was suggested by KS, who did a ton of research for the names they suggested, so thank you. And for the Flower Fairies, Daphne, which was suggested by Asuna, 24, 37, 0, and Freya and Gigi for the last two, which were suggested by Citrus Ma. Thank you all so much for suggesting names. They are so much fun to read through. Remember to suggest names for these nights as well. And now we are back to your regularly scheduled programming. And finally, we're at Iris Agate, which I can't really say, but uh, she was definitely the hardest to nail down. Like I said, going into this, I didn't really have a clear vision of where I wanted to go with this character, which made it kind of difficult to start, but I think it also ended up going in a fun direction 
and because of that. Sometimes I enjoy drawing these less thought out characters to see where my mind goes just looking at a picture of the prompt, especially whenever I'm coming in or going out of a bit of a character design funk like I am now. It's sort of a character design warm up just to get the juices flowing again so that I can do some more serious work. So for Iris, I ended up pinning a lot of references that just gave me the general feeling of the character and had a matching color palette. And from there, I relied on a lot of interesting shape language and experimentation to feel out where she was going. The cuts of the gems themselves I was looking at are filled with lots of different interesting shapes, which were really fun to play around with. There's a lot of round and boxy edges, and then the pattern within the stone has some sharp points. So I definitely wanted the look of the stone to inform the armor that I was making and take the armor in a bit of a strange direction, not really historically inspired, but also a little bit. Like I said earlier, in my fight style lineup, this character would be the analytical, precise fighter of the group. So I wanted her to be very elegant and graceful. So I thought a rapier and buckler would be a perfect fit for her. When I've seen fencing styles performed in HEMA demonstrations, it seems very strategic and methodical. So I wanted to take that approach with this character. And so that fencing inspiration also very loosely inspired the look of her armor, but it was also very difficult to nail down. I went through a lot of different versions and also ended up scrapping the sketch I started with in favor of a less dynamic pose, but I didn't want to hide her armor in profile view, so it is what it is. But in my mind, I basically approached her armor as if cuts of the stone were like plates of glass. So I used some individual plates for her pauldrons and bracers and in her hair, which was also loosely inspired by this style. But for her breastplate, I went for a wasp waisted look that sort of mimics the shape of a fencing uniform with a separate shoulder slash neck armor piece that's supposed to look a bit like cut glass. Almost as if the stone could be manipulated like glass and reformed with the prism effect intact. And I pretty much continued that shape language throughout, also giving her a little armor skirt in place of leg armor, loosely inspired by this Gibson girl in a fencing outfit. I decided to use minimal armor everywhere else just to separate her from the other characters and instead to give her some sleek boots that would be horrible for fighting, I'm not really going for accuracy with these designs, and some poofy leg of mutton sleeves, mostly because I think they look fancy. Color was a little tricky at first, uh, but I I also color picked from the reference and tweaked the palette a bit, keeping to mostly blues and giving her a complimentary skin tone. And from there added in that prism effect throughout the armor, kind of inspired by this fabric. And finally finished up by cleaning the piece up a bit and also changing the sword hilt to look more like a rapier because it was looking a little bit too much like a cutlass at first. But with all those tweaks, Iris was finally done. And here are all the finished designs. I think this week was a little bit more successful than my last session, even though I am still in a bit of a design rut, but I actually really like how these came out. I'd say Petersite is probably my favorite just because I think they came together really well, but I think the other two are also super cool. If you enjoyed this installment, stay tuned in the next couple of weeks because I'm planning on doing an episode of like villainous bad luck gemstones as the antithesis for this team in kind of a part two, but also feel free to suggest other prompts and ideas in the comments below. And also do let me know your name suggestions for these characters. I always have fun seeing what you guys come up with. Hello. Thanks so much for watching till the very end. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you didn't mind that the art was kind of sketchy this week. I've had a lot on my plate and I didn't really have time to make cool illustrations. Hopefully I'll be back to that in the next couple of design videos. But if you actually prefer this format, please let me know because oh boy, does it save a ton of time. But if you did enjoy, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. When you do, not only will I write love letters to you and you alone in my diary, but you'll also become an honorary leaf because I wouldn't be a pile of leaves without you guys. But anyways, thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and watch the next episode of Kenobi and cry my eyes out. Probably. Bye. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. Ah! <laughs>